I'm Janet Fritz for Galaxy Girl Creations. Today I am participating in the off the board YouTube hop that Crystal Barrett started over on her channel, Pineapple Papers. Go check her out and see who else is playing along. I'm using this pin of this Christmas tree made from ribbon as my inspiration today. This has been on my Pinterest board for, oh gosh, years, and <laughs> I thought it's about time to go ahead and get it onto a page or um, work with it. So my thought was I would get a couple of twigs from the yard and then I would take this green ribbon. I've got tons and tons of little offcuts of green ribbon in a jar and so I pulled that out and I thought well I'll go ahead and start tying those on there and see how it comes out. And I know I have this picture of my daughter that's up in the right hand corner and it is her laying down on Christmas morning amongst all of the Christmas stockings and um, I've been wanting to get this particular picture in my album for quite a while. The story is about the Christmas stockings, not necessarily this particular morning, but um, I thought what a perfect um, embellishment to put with this one picture. So I chose this background paper that is just some wood grain and that's from Kaiser Craft. It's from one of their Christmas collections maybe a year or two ago and uh, you could use any um, wood grain paper would work that has a pretty neutral wood grain. I know a lot of them have like colors mixed in and such but this is just a, a plain old white and black and gray and brown wood grain so I thought it worked well. It matches that little wood twig that I've got there and um, it really does help the twig to kind of shine off the page. So I started pulling these ribbons together and I just tied them one time around the little tree or the little twig and what happened was everything started going kind of off kilter so my ribbons were hanging down more on the right than on the left and so I went and looked at the pin, um, the Pinterest pin and looked at a couple of other ones and I'm trying to figure out how to make it so the ribbons are more straight across rather than one going up and one going down and uh, what I came up with was if you tie it around the twig just one time and then wrap it back around itself and tie it on the opposite side then the ribbons seem to come out a little bit more straight so you can see that's what I'm doing here and um, I think it looks a lot better than the first ribbons that I were I was tying on and that was me just trying to make a Christmas tree design and make sure I was not cutting myself a little bit short there on my ribbons and uh, gonna have my my tree be kind of like straight up and down I, I do want it to have that tapered effect so I'm trying not to cut the ribbons off too much down at the bottom this particular piece of ribbon is a piece that has wire in it you can still use wired ribbon if you went to cut it just pull the little wires out and um, use it like you would any other ribbon so that works as well so while I'm putting those on, um, I can tell you a little bit about this particular hop is to use up or use the Pinterest pins that you've got pinned. A lot of us pin stuff, we think we're going to use it, we never do. Some of us don't even go back and look at it. And so uh, Crystal wanted us to go and be inspired by the pins that we've made and start using them. And this is a great series, I've really enjoyed it. This is my third time playing along this month. and. Um, over at Pineapple Papers, Crystal has been uh, doing a video every day for the month of July. So she's got lots of stuff over there and then she's also got links for the people that are playing along with her each day. So go check that out and see, um, see what everyone else is working on. Um, my story on this layout, like I said, is these, stick, these Christmas stockings and you can see my daughter laying down there with her Christmas stocking it has a big stuffed animal alligator sticking out of the top of it and she is probably about a year and a half old in this picture and I think she could still fit inside of her Christmas stockings so Christmas is a huge thing in our family and Christmas stockings are really the highlight of Christmas we don't do like the little stockings with just um, a few odds and ends that hang on the mantle our Christmas stockings there is no way they would hang on the mantle they're huge um, and what started it was my grandma 
had um, made us, I think it was my grandma anyway, had made us Christmas stockings for my brother and I when we were little, and they were knit with our names knit into them. Actually, my mom might have made them. But anyway, we don't have those anymore. Um, as we got older um, and they were worn, and as we had more people in the family, that was a lot of work to knit it with your name and uh, some sort of design like a chimney or a Santa on it. Um, so my mom and my grandma started using a knitting machine and they would knit the stocking and then they would just, um, kind of like cross stitch, but with yarn, um, right over the, the yarn of the stocking and they would, um, create a pattern in it. So they would put our names on it and everybody has a different pattern. My son has like a nutcracker. My daughter has an angel. Um, I think I have a snowman. Um, we have all kinds of different ones that that are done. And if you can draw it on graph paper, my mom can pretty much put it on there. And when my daughter was born, my mom asked what I wanted on her stocking and if I wanted her whole name. Her name is Alexandra, um, but we just call her Allie. But I said, of course, I want her whole entire name, Alexandra. So the stocking had to be super long to fit all of the letters on um, she went vertically rather than horizontally, otherwise it would be comp a super fat stocking. And as it is, it's huge anyway. Worked out great when she was little, and we could put all kinds of huge, like, you know, little baby toys in there, like little people, um, cars and such. But uh, as she's older and an adult now, um, <laughs> it takes a lot, a lot more money to fill up her stocking when your kids start asking for like thumb drives and video games and such. Then you're like, uh, what am I going to do with this stocking that you could fit in until you were a year and a half old <laughs> and you've only got like a few gift cards in it. So um, we have to be really creative of, on what goes in there. And oftentimes they will get stuff in there that is not just fun stuff, maybe socks or um, admittedly, we try to make put some fun socks in there too, but um, they will get like socks or un <laughs> a few pairs of underwear in there as well, just to kind of take up space. But then we try and fill it with um, mostly fun stuff, uh, you know, graphic tees and that kind of stuff that takes up a lot of room, but also, you know, some nice little treats and such. So anyway, that's the going to be the story that goes on here, and I don't have it typed up yet as I'm voicing this layout or this video, but I will type it up and it's going to go underneath the photo. Um, not underneath it, it's going to be below the photo. Did that even make sense? Underneath it, not meaning behind the photo, but underneath it on the page. <laughs> so um, I've pulled out a couple of pieces of scrap paper and ink, I'm going to ink them up and those are going to be the photo mats. And then I've also pulled out this uh, ephemera pack from Kaisercraft. Now, I, I don't know which collection it's from. I have three different packages of ephemera from three different Christmas collections that they put out. And I think they might have even all been the same year. I, I know like one was like Mint Wishes and I don't know what the other two were called. One's very traditional red and green. I did not end up using anything from that, although you'll see that I do try to add a few pieces on there. But there are um, some pieces that are just black and white and ones that have gold on it. And so that's primarily what I went with. And I ended up watercoloring on the black and white pieces just to give them some color. And um, I really like how, the, how it came out. There's a, a bit of softness to it. And uh, it's not overpowering, but you know, with watercolor, you can go as light or as dark as you want. So I did end up gessoing these pieces, and that is just clear gesso from Art Basics, which is a Prima Prima product. And um, so all of these Christmas presents and these pieces that are, you know, words and such, those are all done with some gesso. And then at the end, I'm gonna add some pieces that are like poinsettias and stuff but I didn't remember to gesso them and um, strangely they came out great. They didn't like warp, they didn't buckle, um, and they didn't suck up the watercolor like I thought they would being just paper. So they must have some sort of light coating on them. 
Now I'm just using a baby wipe to pull some of the color off and if you've gessoed you can pull most of the color off and have no problems. And I am just trying to give these kind of a light wash but um, I do want the ribbon around each package to be a different color so um, in this case right here I kind of forgot I need to let the green dry so I had to pull some of that up and start over. I'm not the best at watercoloring and I've just watched some tutorials on it and I something I'd really like to learn how to do a little bit better. Um, I have a, a really good friend that is an amazing watercolor artist like full-on paintings and art shows and um, maybe I can pick her brain on it but I want to understand the basics before I go and pick her brain um, so that's why I've just been watching some videos on it and it's been pretty helpful. So if you're interested in watching those, uh, the ones I've been watching are just from a channel called Let's Make Art and they actually have a monthly subscription for um, a project each month and you get like all the paint and everything that you need to make the project but uh, I don't subscribe to it, I just stumbled across their channel and I've been really enjoying it. Um, so feel free to go check that out if that's something that you're interested in. So you can see there I've got my Christmas tree all all figured out. Um, I decided to let those ribbons be at the bottom be really long and then at the end when I got all of the ribbon on there I went through and trimmed it and I'm sure you saw me doing that if you're watching the video. <laughs> and the top ones I ended up using a tiny bit of um, glue gun to kind of hold those pieces horizontally on the paper. Um, just because they're so small I didn't want them to kind of sag down or, or push up and then it also gave me a good baseline as to how all of the other ribbons are should be laying and I didn't end up using hot glue on any of the ones down at the bottom I figured those will stay and plus once it all gets into the page protector in an album it's gonna stay anyway um, there is a little bit of bulk on the ribbons that are super thick because the knots end up being a little bit thicker but it's not any more thick than like a, say a flare badge or anything like that so um, also it's not something that you know if it gets pressed against another page or anything it's not gonna hurt another page it's not going to get dented itself because it's a soft pliable piece of ribbon now, of course, the little branch piece is not pliable, but I'm not really worried about that either. Some pages in my album are kind of bulky, but not, not the majority of them, so I think it's going to work out okay. Now, I don't end up using the piece that I am watercoloring right now, um, but I wasn't sure what I was going to end up using, so I went ahead and watercolored a few more pieces than I thought I would need. And there are my Christmas um, gifts all under the tree ready to go and I did use a single piece of foam on some of them and then on a couple of them I had to double foam it double foam that's not a word but hey it's gonna be a word now so I double foamed <laughs> a couple of them because of the thickness of the little tree branch I wanted the gifts to be a little bit in front of that um, so I had to put some double pieces of foam just for that purpose. And I'm sorry, I'm a little bit off camera there. Um, I know in some of my videos I've been off camera at the bottom of the page and we have completely rearranged our office. And for a little bit I was scrapbooking in a place that I don't normally scrapbook. And so um, trying to get better about making sure that I am on camera. So bear with me, things will get better, I promise. Now this little stamp set, these are from Kelly Creates, and I got these as a gift, um, a prize actually that I won for the Thursday Sketch Challenge at uh, Redefined Creative, and um, I, I love them, so I was like, hey, these are on my desk right now, I just got them like a week and a half ago, so thank you, Christina, and um, I, like, I, I love them, I got those, a little sticker set, and some sequ a, a sequin package. Um, and it had this one wreath that is like little pine 
branches and little um, holly berries. So that's what I put around these two pieces of watercolored ephemera. And they do have a gold ring around them, but because I watercolored, the gold is not as shiny. And um, I don't know if that's, well, it, it's actually probably because of the gesso, not necessarily the watercolor. But I wanted to give a little more definition to each of those two circular pieces rather than uh, having them um, just kind of have no definition on the edge. I could have inked them, but this this uh, little wreath was like the perfect size. I didn't have to cut anything, um, so it worked out perfectly. Now these poinsettias and hollyberry leaf pieces, they don't have any gesso on them, and they took to the watercolor no problem. Like I said before, no buckling. Um, and I could still pick up some of the color pretty easily when I accidentally mixed a little bit of green with the red there on the holly berries. Um, so if you have uh, ephemera that is like black and white sketchy kind of designs, you know what, watercolor it, go for it. Um, or, you know, use some acrylic paint or whatever. Go Just don't be afraid to kind of like use your mixed media stuff to make things different. Now that piece that says Christmas, I tried using it. I, it, I think it's from it's from one of the two packages um, that I pulled stuff from, and it's the font in it is not as whimsical as the rest of the layout. Um, so, and then this is from the red and green pack of ephemera that Christmas traditions. And it does not end up getting used. It's like kind of that olivey green, and I don't know. It just did not go with the layout, but I liked the words on it. So, hey, let's put it up there and see. Um, I end up using these the little black pieces with the gold writing on them. And so I really like how that came out. And then in that blank space um, below the photo, uh, between the photo and the, if the little embellishment cluster to the bottom right. That's where my journaling is going to be and you're going to see that in the close-ups. So uh, stick around at the end for that because I don't do that on camera. Um, I'm I'm going to be printing out, at least at this point, I think I'm going to print it out on some vellum and then stick it down, um, stick the journaling down on the vellum because uh, there's a lot a lot of that I want to cover so I don't think if, if I hand wrote it I don't think I have enough room so that is kind of my plan so stick around for the close-ups for that um, if you've enjoyed this video I'd love it if you'd give me a thumbs up and subscribe if you're not already a subscriber and if you are thank you so much for subscribing uh, also don't forget to go check out crystals um, off the board layout for today and actually all of hers for the month of July and you can find her channel at Pineapple Papers. I will link that down below as well. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day and I will see you next time.